If you don't think that prayer changes things, then you need to meet Zelaya Knox. For more than two decades, she was confined to a wheelchair. She couldn't feel her legs, couldn't feel her feet. Walking, that was out of the question, at least until Delia went to a revival service. And what happened there has been seen around the world. Take a look. There's a whole lot that I don't recall specifically, but I know this, and the car vehicle was upside down and they were trying to get me out, and there was music playing in my head. On a snowy Christmas day in 1987, Dahlia Knox was in a car with her sister and brother-in-law when they were hit by a drunk driver. I was semi-conscious, then I went unconscious, and so then I woke up in the hospital. Although the others escaped with minor injuries, the crash left Dahlia paralyzed from the waist down. Doctors told her she would likely be confined to a wheelchair the rest of her life. From there on, I had to, I mean, I went through, like, what do I do from here now? Where do I go from here? Dahlia was determined to live her life. An accomplished gospel singer, she continued her work in music ministry, but her life was hard. I would continue to go and sing, and I would push myself, you know, into the restroom or the shower, or whatever, and then I would drag myself into the car, and I would push myself. It was one of those things where you had to drag yourself, you had to push yourself. Dahlia believed God would heal her as people prayed constantly for her. But after a decade passed with no changes, she started to lose hope. I didn't like going to altar calls, because every time I would go somewhere, the service would change to a hailing service and somebody would try to pull me out of the chair and I've been plopped, dropped, flopped and flipped and you know to the point where I was like I just can't go through that anymore. While attending a Christian conference she was captivated by one of the speakers, Bishop Levy Knox. It was so amazing because he didn't see the wheelchair, he saw beyond the wheelchair. He later became her husband and a major source of inspiration for Dahlia. I remember him taking me in front of the mirror at home um, and holding me up and, and just say, I want you to see yourself standing. He would take me and dance with me and just, you know, as my legs would dangle, he would take me around. And he was one that always continuously tried to put hope and faith in me as to think beyond that, even though at times I was frustrated about it. By 2010, Dahlia had been in a wheelchair for over 22 years. In August, she and her husband attended a conference hosted by evangelist Nathan Morris. The evangelist went up and he started speaking on healing and all that. Had I known it was a healing service, I have to be honest, I would have never gone. She was at the front of the church with her husband when Pastor Morris started praying for her. Here I am confined for 22 and a half years in this wheelchair and for the first time in the longest time I find myself that something could possibly really be happening. I said I'm here feeling something in my legs. The power of God is all over this sister right now. She normally has no feelings but she she can feel our hands on her our hands on her legs. And she's had no feelings. I had to get to the heart of it. And the heart of it was, are you willing to risk your pride and take a step of faith, even if you fall? With the assistance of her husband, Delia slowly rose. She later stumbled and sat back down, fighting to block out the doubts flooding her mind. I remember the words that he prayed were, let faith arise in this woman of God. In Hebrews 11, faith is in the present and the now. It, it's standing between two present terms. Now faith is. And I sat there and a righteous indignation came in me. A righteous anger came in me. I just said to them, I just said, just worship, just worship, just worship, because I wanted to drown everything that was going out, out, out. I just, just worship, just right, worship, worship, worship. Then her husband and Pastor Morris helped her back on her feet. She took a few steps on her own. Then as the congregation sang and prayed, Dahlia started walking around the church. Paraplegians will tell you that you can move on your hips. And so I thought, was I moving on my hips? I just started moving my knees up and down and I started bouncing on my knees. It was like the awakening. This is really happening. 
she began to take those steps and we began to walk. It was like the word, the word that had already been spoken, uh, beholding the word, uh, hearing the word, and now the manifestation of the promises of God was being fulfilled right before our eyes. It was phenomenal. It was, it was life-changing for us. Over the following weeks, she says God began to strengthen her legs. Three weeks later, she walked in front of her own congregation for the first time. Today, Dahlia leads worship at Living Word Christian Church in Mobile, where her husband is the pastor. She also dances with him every chance she gets. The miracle is the journey, is not the moment. It's the journey of recognizing who God is. If he would have never healed me, I would still be pushing through to get into his face. Because it's not about the healing, it's about the journey of knowing that God is there for us. Doesn't that just make your faith soar? God is a God of miracles, Pat. Stuck in a wheelchair for all those years. 22 and a oh, half years. Unbelievable. Here's some yeah. prayer requests now. Somebody said they need healing for a severe lifelong nervous condition. A granddaughter is healing from Lyme disease. Uh, a mission trip somebody's going to take to Vietnam in November. And finally, salvation for a family. Sons, daughters, sisters, brothers, grandkids. Great grandkids, the whole family needs salvation. All right, what else yeah, you got? Yeah, uh, protection for our two sons and their families in the military. That's probably a, a popular prayer there. Healing from cervical cancer that spread to lymph nodes. Jobs for my four adult children, all who were laid off. And someone needs to be healed of spinal stenosis and congested heart disease. So a lot of prayer needs. All right, folks, listen. <clears throat> Here in front of me uh, is uh, a group of uh, prayer requests. We have probably received over 100,000 now. I'm estimating that's about where we are uh, with people who want prayer. There is a tremendous hunger in the hearts of people. They want to be touched by God. Yes. You know, God is the author. You know, He is his name is He who created everything, caused everything to be. And uh, the God we serve caused everything else to be. So Wendy and I are going to join hands, the two of us, and we're going to agree for you. Now all we ask you to do is to just receive it. Mm -hmm. Just open your heart and receive the answer. Yes. Father, we join together right now. And we believe God in Jesus' name for the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, heal people. There's somebody with paralysis, and God is healing them right now. You, you've seen that peace on the Delia, and yes. you're, you're being inspired. You're, you feel something stirring within you. You feel the power of God right yes. now in Jesus' name. Wendy, what are you doing? Someone with uh, an infected tooth, very painful, God is healing you. And also someone with loose teeth, um, God is, uh, is healing you right now as well in Jesus' name. We're You've got a virus that's causing what's called night sweats. And, and you've been to the doctors, and they haven't been able to help you. But God right now is healing you in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, there are also people right now who are suffering financially. There are many people, you're out of work or you don't have enough money and you can't meet your bills and you're crying out to God for help. God has heard your prayer and right now you're going to see an explosion of God's blessing in your life financially. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you.